What's going on, everybody? Crazy Dog, back with my Browns Ravens Week 12 Sunday Night Football Recap. Now, before I get into this, uh, I may get into a rant, so I would highly suggest you turn your volume down just a little bit, because things may get loud. We'll see. Depends on how heated I get talking about this game. Because I'll tell you one thing, watching this game tonight, yeah, there were some things that happened that definitely had me pissed off. Especially on the offensive side of the ball. Yeah. But yeah, anyways, Browns lose and yet another heartbreaker, this time by a final score of 16-10. to 10. As for the fourth time this season... Baker Mayfield had a chance to lead the offense down the field for a potential game-winning touchdown. And for the fourth time this season, he couldn't get the job done. Yeah, four times. The Chiefs game, the Charger game, the Steeler game, and tonight. All those games were by a final score less than a touchdown. Had he possessed... A clutch gene. We'd probably win two of those. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, but he's lost all four. Wow. I don't know what's worse. Baker Mayfield himself? Or Kevin Stefanski's play caller? Because I'll tell you one thing. They're both pretty bad. Now, Baker... Yeah, he's hurt, but he can still make plays out here overthrowing guys left and right. I swear that dude could lead a coup d'etat with uh, how many guys he's overthrown. (laughs) My God, bro. What is up with you? And Kevin, Mr. I gotta coach better. (sighs) I can already hear it now. He's going to say that in his press conference. (laughs) Oh my God, this dude. That is literally... This this team's version of, I gotta watch the tape. <laughs> it's like, come on, dude. You say, I gotta coach better. Well, do it then. You say it, and then you go back out there the next week, and you continue to coach like a bozo. Like, if you can't call plays, give the play sheet to Alex Van Pelt. This way you can focus on coaching the entire team. Because clearly, something has uh, gotten you a little uh, acting stupid. The play calling over the last couple weeks has been uh, atrocious. Mm Mm-hmm. Just watch some of these games, man. Look at this dude's play calling. Like, what are you doing, bro? You have me over here looking dumbfounded with the play calling that you guys be doing. And what's really worse about this game, we legit had a Joe Woods masterclass tonight. For the most part. Yeah, there were some occasions where the defense uh, did not look good. But four interceptions tonight. Ten points. Not just ten points off of those turnovers. Ten points in general. We only had three points off of turnovers at all. We were lucky to even get three points off of those turnovers. Like... I saw a stat on Twitter just a little while ago. Entering this week, quarterbacks who threw, like, what, four interceptions were 0-37. I may be a little off on that stat. Go look it up on Twitter. It's it's insane. Yeah, they were 0-37. Well, now they're 1-37. Yep. It's crazy, isn't it? Defense actually forces turnovers. But the offense is stuck in the mud. I don't know what the heck happened. And I don't know what the heck the Bungles did to Baker because other than that game, Baker's been kind of doo-doo. And I don't know what the heck happened. There's just something about the Bungles that turns him into a psycho. Because, like, dude... I literally saw a stat on Twitter from my guy, Jake Trotter. Shout out to Jake. Really cool dude, you know? 
Here is the Browns scoring since October 10th. 14 points, 17 points, 10 points, 41 points, 7, 13, 10. I ask again, what did the Bengals do to Baker Mayfield that has him just want to go out there and slaughter them? Like, damn. <laughs> did they offend you, like, at some point? <laughs> did, like... Zach Taylor or Joe Burrow say something to you at some point that offended you and now you want to destroy them? I, I don't even get it. <laughs> I don't get it. Is it just the Bengals franchise in general? <laughs> Is it the fact that it's an interstate rival wearing br a black and orange? Do you see, like, uh, Oklahoma State in the Bengals? Hmm? Because why can't you do that stuff the rest of the year. It's like once or twice a year we get a Baker masterclass and then the rest of the year we get nothing. Like, what's up with that? For real. <laughs> it's crazy. And then to make things much more peachy, oh yeah, Jack Conklin, who just came back, ah, oh, he's hurt again. And according to Adam Schefter, the brown sphere, it's a, a torn uh, patellar tendon. Lovely. Yes. Now, you look at the stats for this game. Baker Mayfield, 18 of 37, 247 yards and a touchdown. Got sacked twice. Had a rating of 79.5. Then they tried that nice uh, little uh, Jarvis Landry, uh, you know, trick play where they have him try to throw the ball and it backfired him miserably. Wound up being a fumble. Speaking of which, Baker Mayfield literally out here double pumping on a screen and fumbled the ball in the second pump. Bro, what are you doing? We literally could have scored on that one. I think that was following a one of the interceptions. <laughs> this team is just a meme at this point. You know, running the ball, only ran it 17 times for 40 yards, 20 of which from Kareem Hunt. I knew the Ravens had a very good run defense, but damn, Really? I don't think they really even did any, like, you know, screenplays. They rarely did that. I mean, they rarely did any play-action stuff in general. Half the crap was out of shotgun. Like, what the heck is this play calling, Kevin? Like, damn, bro. It's like the league figured it out and you decided to turn into a bozo. Instead of adjusting, you just get stupid. <laughs> what the heck? Now, on the bright side, Jarvis Landry had his best game of the year. Six receptions, 111 yards. David Njoku caught a pretty cool touchdown. But other than that, nothing much there. I mean, 18 receptions for 247 yards. That's pretty cool. You know, considering the Ravens secondary is not great. It's good, but not great. They've definitely dealt with some injuries. No Marcus Peters, among others. But, uh, yeah, man, there's no way the Browns really just went out there and wasted a defensive masterclass, right? Four interceptions, got two sacks today, another one from Miles Garrett, had a half a sack from JOK, who has been a baller lately. Thank God he's back. And Jordan Elliott even got a half a sack, too. So, nice. And then Jadavian Clowney, I know he's not going to show up on the stat sheet, but he was pretty good in containing Lamar. He was maybe like a... A step or two away from getting a couple sacks. But, you know, Lamar Jackson, he escapes very easily and everything. Very hard to bring down. I mean, like, I don't know what else to say. Like, we're 6-6. Six and six. Heading into this season, we had expectations, which is very dangerous for this team, apparently. Because when you have expectations, the team struggles to live up to those expectations and people get pissed. I, I don't know what it is. Is this going to be like a thing like where every odd year we suck, but then in the even year we are great? Because if that's the case, well, watch out for next year. I mean, I guess on the bright side, us being trash this year means we have a chance to get a good receiver like Garrett Wilson in the draft. But knowing the Browns, they're going to go out there and take like a tackle or a tight end or something. I mean, they know our one of our blatant needs is receivers. So what are they going to do? Oh, yeah. With the whatever pick in the 2022 NFL Draft, the Cleveland Browns select, uh, insert tight end's name here. <laughs> it's 
exactly. If they take a tight end, I'd be like, why? We need receivers. <laughs> Not tight ends. Oh, God, dude. Kevin, 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 Kevin. <laughs> oh, boy. You and Baker, dude. I don't know what the heck's up with you guys, but you guys better snap out of it. You know, <laughs> we're going to wind up with a freaking losing record. <laughs> And though we got the uh, bye week, and then we got these guys again, and then to round out the season, we get the Raiders, Packers on Christmas, and then we have the uh, Bungles and the Steelers, who, by the way, got stumped by the Bungles today, so maybe we can, you know, end the season on a high note, or we can go out whimpering like we did in 2019, where uh, we literally pretty much looked like garbage at the end of the season, because everyone knew that Freddie Kitchens was gone. Now we got people calling for Freddie, uh, for Freddie, <laughs> no, for Kevin Stefanski's head on a platter, but he ain't gonna get fired, not after leading us to the playoffs. I'm giving him two years. Next year, and then if he, if he sucks next year, I mean, yeah. Like, if he sucks next year, especially with a fully healthy Baker Mayfield, and if they go out and, you know, get us a couple good receivers in the draft or free agency or whatever, then damn, I don't know what to say. Like, he's probably gonzo. That's tough. But, Kevin, you got to fix your play calling, dude. You either fix your play calling or you hand the play sheet over to AVP because it ain't working right now. You better get your act together. All right, because playoffs are looking uh, kind of like a long shot right now. And with the way we're playing, do we even deserve to make it in the playoffs? <laughs> no. <laughs> Not with an injured quarterback who plays like a bozo and our coach who's out here coaching like he doesn't know what the hell he's doing half the time. I'm telling you, the league caught up to Kevin and he ain't adjusting. They figured him out. Last year, he took him by surprise. This year, he's been exposed, Loki, and it's up to him to adjust. You know, you either adjust and evolve, or the league's gonna pass you by. And before I know it, you're gonna be on the unemployment line, and we're gonna be once again looking for a new head coach. I mean, of course, the playoff berth last year gave him a few more years of a cushion, but yeah. That was just an overall weird year. This is an overall weird year. All around. Just look at the college football uh, playoff right now. Look at those teams in the freaking conference championship games. You know? No Oklahoma. No Ohio State. No Clemson. Like, what? Damn. Freaking craziness out here, you know? And I'm beginning to get the vibe that the Browns had to die for the Cavs to live. And honestly, I'm kind of okay with that. Cavs are looking good. If the if the freaking Browns are going to be out here playing like a bunch of bozo losers, hey, at least the Cavs are good. They're watchable. Yeah, J.B. Bickerstaff has had his moments, but got a nice, young, fun team to watch. And they're 10-10 and 10 on the year. And if I, I honestly think if Mobley never got hurt, we're probably with an even better record right now. I mean, we were, what, 9-5 and five when Mobley got hurt. But, like, you look at how Lamar Jackson did tonight. 20 of 32, 165 yards, one touchdown, <laughs> four interceptions. <clears throat> had a rating of 46.5 and got sacked twice. They had 43 carries, 148 yards on the ground, 68 of which from Lamar Jackson on 17 carries. Freeman had 16 for 52. Other than that, not really much. Through the air, Mark Andrews, as usual, killed us. Four receptions, 65 yards and a touchdown. Marquise Brown, 8 for 51. Bateman, 4 for 31. And then everyone else only had one catch. So, nothing much there. It's mainly Andrews and Brown, as usual. And, uh, of course, you know, we had two fumbles that they recovered. One from Baker, one from Jarvis. And their sacks came from Tyus Bowser and Odafe away. So, yeah. Defense showed up. But of course the offense was stuck in the mud. So far we've really only gotten one game where both sides of the ball showed up. 
and it resulted in that 41 point beatdown against the uh, the Bungles. Yeah, that was a fun game, you know, going into Cincinnati, beating the crap out of them, 41 to 16. That was really the only game where both sides of the ball showed up. You know, you either get an offensive masterclass and a defensive disaster class, or vice versa. But in that game, we just so happened to get both sides having a masterclass, and it resulted in a blowout. And I was having fun. And then immediately, we have neither side showing up, and we get blasted 45-7. to Nice. Cool. Yeah. Now we get the bye week to heal up and prepare for the Ravens again. So it'll be interesting to see what adjustments we make or what we don't make. Because I know these Browns are probably not going to do a damn thing. And we're going to get carved up at home next week. Yay! Or two weeks. Yay! But yeah, like I said, after that we got a pretty tough ending of the schedule. We got Raiders at home, Packers on the road, Steelers on the road, and then the Bungles at home. So we'll see how it goes. But that is going to wrap it up for this video. Shout out to everybody. Shout out to the Dog Pound as always. Shout out to the Ravens fans out there. Ravens Dead Zone. The only one that I really know of. <laughs> for the most part. I mean, you have Engraven Vids. You have a couple other ones out there. Oh, man. You know, we were actually able to somewhat stop Lamar. I mean, we forced four interceptions. It's just, like I said, the offense was stuck in the mud. Can't have that. You know? Can't have that. It's freaking ridiculous, man. Like, Baker completely lost the clutch gene. I don't know what happened to it. I don't know. Hopefully he finds it for next year. Because if he if he plays like this next year, he go bye-bye. And we'll be once again looking for a new quarterback. Whether it be a veteran or... It'll be in the draft. So... That's going to wrap it up. I'm Crazy Dog 99. Let's go, Browns. And um, I'll be live tomorrow for Cavs and Mavs. That should be a good game. Cavs should be pretty much fully healthy, minus Sexton. We'll see if uh, Dean Wade plays. Because I know he was a scratch from the last game. I actually didn't even know he was hurt until I looked on the injury report. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll be primarily healthy. For the most part, besides Sexton, of course. But uh, that's gonna wrap it up. I'm Crazy Dog 99. Let's go Browns. Six and six. Got the bye week, so this week should be fun on Twitter at least. Probably full of toxicity. Yeah, whatever. At least we got the Cavs to watch, <laughs> you know. And by the way, um, Guardians, where you at? You know, uh, you know, you can sign players now, right? I mean, you don't have to wait until after the uh, CBA thing, right? You can sign players now. Like, it's legal. Or are you just not going to spend money this year again? I thought you told us you were going to, you know, spend some money, you know? Uh, actually participate in free agency. Oh, a crazy dog. They signed Sandy Leone. You expect me to get excited over a minor league invitation thing what <laughs> boy I'm not that desperate yay i'm gonna make a video about sandy leone Woo! nope all right i'm crazy dog let's go browns i'm out